Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the last week of hockey, otherwise known as... Huh? This is High Reels High Sticks. Okay, so a big piece of news is CBJ firing their coach and hiring the loud uncle of the NHL coaching stable, none other than John Tortorella. Gulp along with me, please. My first thought is that if you're willing to fire a coach after only seven games, maybe you could have fired him prior to those seven games? I assume that's what the preseason's for. I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, Torts is already in peak Torts mode, otherwise known as his only mode. Torts is just peak. CBJ finally won a game, which they're probably more relieved about than pleased about. I kind of wanted them to break their streak at the same time as they broke Montreal's, but Lord knows I wasn't ready to wait until December for that to happen. On either side. My one solace in this age of Montreal being this good is that it will make it that much more delicious to finally beat them. When somebody actually does. When are the Black Knights supposed to get here again? Maybe they can do it. Now, I was already looking forward to Torts vs. Toronto Media later this year at the World Cup of Hockey, but this hurts me now because I'm one of those people who says that they don't like drama, but in reality... Oh yeah, we're making this happen. I actually think that Torts is rather well suited to a short tournament style like that, where you can take a group of diverse guys from different teams and different playing styles and get them all to buy into your system pretty quickly and whip them all into a championship lather. But past that, well, I don't think it's way out there for me to suggest that he may not be the end coach that we see from CBJ at the end of the year. And in the meantime, Columbus area stores should probably stock up on cold packs and bags of peas. Today, I would also like to light a candle for those poor 16-year-old sots who had to play against Connor McDavid last year since, oh my god, I'm just, I'm so sorry, you guys. OHL to NHL is a huge jump, and he's already very visibly one of the best players on the Oilers. His game has plenty of room to go at the NHL level, but he's here. So last year, just, I'm so sorry, children of the O. You have my sympathies, and you did as best you could. Last time, I talked about how much I liked 3-on-3 three -three overtime. Or at least I talked about how exciting this is, since this is one of those things where I only like it when it happens to other people's teams. In the crew of people who don't like 3-on-3 three -three overtime, we can count my co-workers and Dustin Bufflin. It's just... it's not hockey. Stupid. Just play real hockey. I'm not even exaggerating, that's what he actually sounded and acted like. Boy was not happy. Here's the thing, Dustin, I know you want to play real hockey till the cows come home, and the one guy that managed to eat a Nutrigrain bar after the third period managed to stumble up the ice and hope that the goalie is already dreaming of his hotel pillow and managed to sneak one in behind him, but the rest of us have bedtimes. And we all know you guys make fun of soccer behind its back for having ties, so that's not a real solution either. However, I do have some insight into why Dustin Bufflin may not enjoy the three-on-three -three shootout. It's because he lost. Of course you hate it! You lost! Today we have a new feature in the video known as We Can See You, you know. This video's recipient is Sharks goalie Alex Stalock, who ripped off his own mask to try and prevent a goal when he lost sight of the puck. Here's the thing. That's actually kind of good thinking in the thick of it, but you know this game is on television, right? There are many cameras, all with different angles. They're all watching you. Everybody else in the arena is watching you. People on TVs are watching you. Everybody in the replay after this is going to watch you. We can see you. It's very clear that you just removed your own helmet since you kind of had to paw at it like a cat who's not sure has washed its ear four times or a dog stuck in a rose bush. We can see you, you know. For another feature, today's A+. Canada elected a new Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau. Now, we tend to do that thing from time to time, and the last Prime Minister actually somehow found spare time to write a book about Canadian hockey history. Have I read it? No. My family made it very clear to me that anyone who brought that book home would be reading it in the snowbank. Is that worthy of an A+. Maybe next week. I had a point here. Our new Prime Minister is a Habs fan. Which is fine. I fully support people being fans of P.K. Subban, and Lord knows nobody's going to accuse him of being a bandwagoner. However, this means that over the next few months, one of two things is going to happen. Trudeau is either going to have to wear the jersey of some local team foisted on him by the Ministry of Pandering, in which case I will immediately turn on him, or behind door number two, he is going to be presented with this jersey only to refuse to wear it, which would definitely be the Habs fan move choice here. So, which will it be? Place your bets now. I'm leaning towards the latter, if only because I think the faux nobility sort of 
suits the role and him. And finally, this week, Kane's goalie Cam Ward got a shutout against the Colorado Avalanche. So congratulations to Cam Ward, to Hurricanes fans, and to everybody else who waited way too long to get a second goalie in their fantasy league because they picked Ben Bishop first and then forgot you needed more than one goalie and then we had to wait till the second last round. So me, I guess, is what I'm saying. Congratulations to me.